of the FFA Open Society. And we especially want to thank you for attending our um, FFA event that we held out at St. Jones Mallard Lodge a, a couple of months ago and for helping make that one of the largest fundraisers for FFA in the entire state. We want to present a, a plaque of So God Made a Farmer. Y'all remember that commercial on Kid Lucky and Super Bowl? It's great. It's so great. Thank you so much. I'll give a more formal introduction to the congressman. I didn't put the plaque to the side there. Uh, the congressman, two things I want to say about him. Obviously, he has a long biography, but I was with mm -hmm. him at a breakfast and two months or so ago, and Herb and I had an ongoing conversation about what can we do for Lawrence County farmers, particularly from the chamber perspective, what can we do to be helpful, and we had this idea that may still come to fruition about trying to kind of have a marketing seminar that I asked the congressman about it because of his background in, in uh, agriculture through radio and uh, so on the committee, et cetera. And anyway, he gave me a name, and by the time I got back to my office, within an hour, one of his staff had give them any information of who that contact was, of their email, their cell phone number, and all that sort of thing. So I want to say to all the folks in this room, we have a great working relationship with the Congressman's office. The number one smartest thing he did was hire my wife. And he actually did that before we got married, so he was smarter uh, than me, even a long time. But anyway, nonetheless, the Congressman, the first two of Arkansas, the Congressman, the director of Now we're scheduling me right before you eat. So I'll try to make it quick because the old saying is that um, people may not remember what you say, but they'll remember how much time you took to say it. So I will try to be brief. You, know, you probably know as much as I do about what's going on with the bond bill. Um, I'm always glad to be back home, but I'm very disappointed that we didn't finish the farm bill before they sent us back home. I'd rather be there right now working on the farm bill trying to get it passed. Uh, we reached an impasse with the nutrition title. Uh, I was here, you know, in the district last year having the same conversation. We, we weren't able to advance it. This year, it's due to the fact that uh, the nutrition title became kind of the, the friction point. Uh, so what we've done, they decoupled that, didn't support that approach. I told leadership I didn't support that approach, but at the end of the day, that's the, the direction they chose to go. Uh, passed the commodity title by itself, the nutrition title will come to the floor in September by itself, and then on passage it'll merge with the commodity title and we'll send that over in conference with the Senate. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this thing done before September 30th. As I said, the nutrition title is, is the controversial part. The commodity title, for all intent and purpose, has already been pre-conference. So the staff on the Senate side, the staff on uh, the House side is already working as we speak to prepare for the official conference. And since we can already agree on most of those issues, it, it should be a fairly quick process on the commodity title. The nutrition title is where we run into problems. The Senate version calls for about $4 billion in cuts. The original House version called for about $20.5 billion in cuts. We're not sure what that will look like next uh, uh, month when we go to the floor and vote on it. We'll know, uh, you'll know what I know, because we'll put it out there to you so you'll, you'll be aware of it. But uh, just to kind of give you a sort of snapshot on how it's tracking right now. That's how it looks. Um, look forward to a productive conference. Uh, there are um, you know, some good things and some bad things. As you know, same as last year, we, we weren't able to uh, protect the direct payment. We were just outgunned, outnumbered. But we did put in the price loss coverage that provides a level of support for, for rice producers in particular, uh, because uh, rice producers are obviously the most sensitive and probably the less available uh, crop insurance for, for rice. So there is a provision there. It's a workable provision that uh, the rice industry has said, yes, we can live with it. Uh, it's not the, the best approach, but it was uh, the approach that we could agree on. So uh, there's support, there is some, some support there for rice producers. Um, I think that's probably the, the, the biggest issue, the biggest hurdle that we had. So um, going forward, I think that if we can get this nutrition title passed, um, first week we're in, we, we can make our September 30th deadline. Uh, nobody wants to see a, uh, you know, a fallback to the 1949-1938 uh, Act Adjustment Act, Stabilization Act. Um, that's not workable. Uh, we don't think that's going to happen. I also don't think it's feasible to think we're going to do another extension. So I think 
think we're in agreement that we need to pass this. Just a question of the nutrition title coming forward. So with that, I know they're getting ready to serve lunch. If anybody has any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them. Before I do, let me talk about this real quick. I'm, and I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Immigration has been a key issue. Um, I was in, uh, in, on, the, on the border earlier this week. We started in San Diego and into uh, the Yuma Tucson sector. And uh, most of you know I've been uh, pretty public about this. I, I support uh, border security first measure as it applies to immigration. So I went down to the border to kind of assess for myself. And, and what that trip did was reaffirm that I believe that's the right approach. Um, I think our Border Patrol agents are doing a fantastic job. Um, the Senate version of immigration reform called for 20,000 additional Border Patrol agents. They're not asking for anything close to that. What they're asking for is, a, is an increase, uh, an enhancement of the technology that we already have. Let's expand it, utilize it to its fullest extent. They're doing a great job with it, a variety of technology that they use to, uh, to interdict. Uh, but our biggest problem is a national security threat, and that comes in the form of our drug cartels on the, on the south side of the border and also a new development or fairly recent development that, are, that is terror cells in northern Mexico. And it won't be if, but when, the two overlap and they start to work together and pose a serious threat on the southern border. So for that reason, we have to be very, very diligent about exercising border security. And uh, when we can do that, and we can do that to the satisfaction of the American people, I think then we can have a productive discussion about where we go in immigration. So with that, I'll give you an opportunity to answer some questions. If not, if you're ready to serve lunch, questions? Okay, sure thing. Congressman, it's an honor to, uh, to speak to my congressman here. Um, thank you for that trip. I think it's really good that you went down to do that. But um, I'm really wondering about the government shutdown. Are you willing to defund, are you willing to shut down the government in order to defund Obamacare, or how should we think about the, the government shutdown that people are talking about here? Well, I think there's a lot of misinformation about uh, what can be done with respect to uh, defunding Obamacare, 80% of its mandatory spending, so it doesn't come under uh, the discretion of uh, the CR, which covers discretionary spending. So uh, I don't think it would be the right approach, uh, certainly to shut down the government. And I don't think that we could we could fully defund Obamacare because it's as I said the bulk of it is mandatory spending anyway. So I don't think that's the appropriate approach. Thank you. One more question about the immigration. Um, is, it, is there anything in the policy right now that supports a, a work visa for these migratory workers? I mean we. Uh, Everybody in this room knows that labor force is bad and getting worse all the time. Uh, I think that most everybody would be in support of a some type of work visa. Right. That's a good point. After we get to a point where we're satisfied with, with border security progressing, and it's a, that's a dynamic issue because it's, it's going to change day to day because that, that situation changes day to day. Then I think the appropriate issue is guest worker program. The H-2A program is really creates more problems than it solves, particularly for the employer. It creates a lot of the liability issues for the employer. Um, it, it can be a problem as simple as uh, not getting the same workforce back year to year. Uh, so that you know increases your cost with respect to training a new employee. A lot of different problems with the H-2A program. Then there's E-Verify. There's a problem with E-Verify. If you're a job site hirer, for example, a contractor, you need to hire somebody right now on the job, put them to work today. E-Verify is not getting it done, and that subjects those employers potentially to more problems. So there are some things we need to work on. I've actually got a bill, it's called the Straw Act, Short-Term Retention of Agricultural Workers. And it's been very well received by the ag industry. In fact, other industries have said they'd love to see this type of approach. This approach that we have would repeal and replace the H-2A program, and it creates, if you will, a, uh, a self-insured pool so that the withholding that you do is done to, to a migratory or a migrant worker trust fund, and they fund their own services as they're here in the country. The withholding pays for the, uh, the creation of the program, the, the ID card that's issued at the port of entry that would include a biometric so they're on the grid and we know they're here and we're able to track them more efficiently. And it also would serve as uh, an incentive for them to leave the country according to the program rules, which would require an individual to leave the country and return to their home country one of every 12 months. 
during that period, they can go to U.S. consulate and receive a rebate on the withholding that they had during their 11 months in the United States. So it's almost like a tax return. That incentivizes them to return to their home country. This just, I think, is a better approach to how we get everybody to play by the rules, to play fair, less liability to the employer, more accountability for the employee, and, and get, get them out of the shadows and get them doing things in daylight, and daylight is the best distance. Sunlight's the best disinfectant. Is this going to be is this going to be involved on like the session that you're about to return back for? Yes. Is this something that's being down the road. What we would likely see is sometime in October we'll look at a border security bill. The House approach will be a piecemeal approach, so it won't be this giant overarching piece of legislation. Uh, what we're seeing from the Senate, a lot of unintended consequences <coughs> that they're still discovering. Ours is going to be the House approach will be a, a issue by issue approach. First one being border security. I think. That Priorities being probably guest worker would come second. I don't know that for sure, but the guest worker program that I just described is very close to what they'll probably introduce on the floor. In fact, I submitted that for consideration, and the bill that will probably come to the floor is almost identical to mine with a few tweaks. It's called the Ag Act, and um, it's very, very similar. So we've been very hands on. It took over two years to write our bill because it went through several iterations. And vetting and so on, and also input from the ag groups. So we feel pretty strongly about it. I think it's a very workable approach. Thank you. Yeah. Rick, I just want to say that it means a lot that we're proud of you for what you do and for you going and doing those trips. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of the most accessible representatives that we've had, and you're on top of what you're doing. And we appreciate you coming and being a part of what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Um, you know, I appreciate you, your encouragement. Um, we live in Arkansas. We have we have migrant workers here, but we don't have the same pressing issue that they live with in Arizona, Texas, California, New Mexico. So getting that firsthand experience up close and personal was very valuable. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that over the next uh, week or two. Um, I'll have an op-ed that will circulate in some of the papers, but I, I think it's important that folks in Arkansas get a real account of what actually is taking place down there, and, uh, and, and they certainly need our help, but we, they, they need the help that they ask for. They know what they're doing, and so it's important that we hear from them. So it was a good trip. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Anything else? Well, I don't want to stand in the way of dinners. LJ? Thank you, Congressman. We appreciate all of our, our representatives here today and uh, for all of you for showing up and uh, helping support this program. Uh, without our farmers here, we, we wouldn't be here. So we appreciate you. Uh, just give us a minute to set up lunch if you. I haven't had a chance to visit the room and down the hall, just go over here to the right and all the way down the hallway. And uh, if you don't mind, just visit with for a minute and we'll get the lunch set up and be ready. Thank you.